How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We're on to episode 13 of Backstage Press, and we have a special guest, Famine Records, and she can say her name and what she does. My name is Chelsea Coronin. I actually, I run the label currently. I do have some help on a couple people with me. I'm just one of them that runs it. Awesome. So first question, Chelsea, how did you get into the music industry? Um, I imagine the label was not the first thing on the list, but I, I want to kind of build to that. So what was kind of the first beginnings? What really got you like involved, got you passionate about music and obviously where you're at now? Um, I'm pretty sure... I never really like had a clear idea. This is what I was gonna do. I I used to listen to you know I used to listen to music. In 2010, I discovered Escape the State, um, and it kind of just snowballed from there. Like uh, situations, obviously, and I know right, and it kind of just snowballed from there. I started listening to you know I literally knew nothing about you know alternative and post hardcore, sure. none of that. Um, so I jumped from them to the class the the classics early 2000s like Aston Alexandria. Um, what was me, Chiodos, um, the word alive, all that kind of like stuff that was pretty yeah. big in the early 2000s and such. Um, and eventually I, I'm, I'm from Italy, so I moved in the States, I'm um, in 2012 and you know, with all the paperwork while I was waiting for paperwork and green card, all that kind of stuff, I kind of just kept listening to more music, get more into the scene. And the only way I had to meet people at the time was online. So I just ran into a couple of um, guys that worked on promotional pages and I just you know was like you know what I'll help I, I listened to some other underground stuff let me let me post about it let me write something about it sure. if this is the only way I have to get the word out um, that's what I'll do so I started kind of as just like a, oh let me paste this link and talk about the band and then eventually you know green card takes a whole lot of time <laughs> up there um so I'm trying to kill time. I have nothing to do. I can't even open a bank account. Go figure. So I was like, you know, if 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 I can help a band by, you know, buying a t-shirt for like $12, um, what if I can do more? What if like sure. yeah. the money that I save for college that I'm not going to because I don't have a green card, what if I can use it for something else instead for the time being? And so that's kind of like how the idea started out. Um, and eventually I kind of started getting... I guess a little bit of a, a, a better grasp on the whole instead of just promoting a band let's do something more for them that's awesome and then how did you kind of come to be where like you were like I need this needs to be a record label like I need to I need to <laughs> sign bands I need to do all this sort of stuff when were you like have that realization that like epiphany moment you're like I need I need to have a label it just makes the most sense I think it kind of just it was a fairly organic transition in a way i i went from you know I, if there's if there's more i can do let's do more but um what would I, you know like i said i can spend 12 dollars. that's fine and that's gonna get them like so far obviously and if another person spends 12 dollars, even better but what if there's more i can do um and at the time i talked to this friend i had and he was like and he was like i don't really know how the word label was thrown into the the whole picture mm -hmm. but the bottom line is before i know it it's the two of us and a third guy he knows who was that who was really into music but was studying accounting who was like gonna work on our accounting stuff for the most part okay and we just kind of started out like that and i don't think it was ever I, I don't really even know if the idea was like mine first if it's always been at the back of my mind or who said the word label first really but um i guess it was kind of like an organic process in a way and at the time there was this french band i used to listen to uh, merge i'm pretty sure they're they're done by now um but i was good friends with the guitarist and one of the composers mm -hmm. and the fact that i really really liked that music i wanted to be able to say i discovered these guys i <laughs> i helped them get to where they are i discovered these guys and they're fantastic like that's my way of you know gratification in a way it's like they do the fantastic music and i think that some bands don't get the recognition they deserve that, that i think sure. deserve anyway i know um and i figured why not if you know if if i don't know fearless doesn't look at them that's fine maybe it's because they're not doing the right moves so what if i find a band that i think deserves to be signed but is not at the point where they can be yet but what if i can turn the right heads at the right time where somebody else comes into play and they're like oh how do we miss out on this let me pick it up so i guess that was kind of like the the um 
the starting factor that pretty much kind of like launched everything else. That's awesome because I, like I don't feel like there's much in terms of like how people kind of start these sorts of things. It's always interesting to me because, you know, I always feel like that's the next step for what I'm doing because I'm like interviewing all of these bands, people that like you were saying that get undeserved attention, you know, that don't get enough attention and, you know, they're great bands. And unfortunately, sometimes it'd be the case where you know the band kind of disbands and they disappear and stuff like that and it's unfortunate you know and so when you when we had originally talked about you know when you had messaged me about doing stuff and I was just like I was just like I felt that connection because I was like she does the same thing except for she has a label which is a little bit more (laughs) better than what I do because I do (laughs) YouTube um but I was just like there was something about it and I was just like I gotta I, I was like whatever band she gives me I know they're they're t- dedicated to what they do. I know they're talented. And so I don't, in my mind, I have no questions when you hit me up to do like an interview with somebody. I'm just like, they're, they rip. So, and not a lot of people know about them. So that's even better. Appreciate it. Um, but the next thing, Chelsea, what was like the first band that you signed? Um, and like, you know, how, how is that process? Cause I imagine it's, it, it might've been, just insane early on and just so so how did you kind of like i guess you learned by like trial trial by fire of like you know learning all the ropes like learning how to do everything making the mistakes and kind of like growing from it so you know if if uh chelsea were like you know, younger chelsea were to watch this and had like some advice what type of advice would you give her to be like you know what like what could you do with this band like any sort of band that you come up with signing and have a label like what would you what would you, what type of advice would you give? Um, I mean, it definitely was a trial and error kind of situation. So a lot of things I think are better learned that way for me personally. Um, cause if I don't bang my head against the wall, I'm not really going to learn at all. But I, I think the two things that I really, really learned the hard way were these I could have gladly skipped probably one have a set financial plan. Um, and not just like, a, oh, I have money on the side, I can use it. Because when I started out, I did. I was like, hey, money's on the side, let me pour it into this because I love it. Sure. But more of a, how do I plan to use said money? Um, just because I have like, say, 10 grand to give you, doesn't mean I can just literally pull it out of the bank, pass it along, and then, you know, here's your advance, we'll figure it out. So I have an actual financial plan and a breakdown of, you know, 10 grand. What am I going to use one grand for? What yeah. am I going to use three for? And so on and so forth. Um, but of course you do need the money, but at the end of the day, having it and not knowing what to do with it is not really going to fix anything. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that, and have a solid, um, contract. And I say it because when I started out a lot of things, um, you know, I was like, no big deal. Like I work with people that I trust. I work with so on and so forth. So I don't need, not necessarily don't need a contract. That's not true, but you know. Um, if something is like, uh, oh, of course, this is a given, but it's not written down. Um, you know, if I work with people that I trust and everything, I don't consider that a problem. But you're going to run into some people that you don't know well enough that if yeah. it's not spelled out for them, they have no reason to follow it. Um, and that I also learned the hard way. So um, I've seen, I've had the chance in the past three years to see other contracts from like different record labels. Um, bigger, smaller, it doesn't matter, like anything in between. Um, and I still do think that what we offer is much different than anything else I've ever laid eyes on or got my hands on. Um, but I did learn, spell everything out as basic as it might be, as simple as it might be, as much of a given as it might be. Even if I told you, like, hey, this is how it's going to go, but I don't write it down, I learned that I just because I said it in an email or in a message or in a phone call doesn't mean people will remember it sure. or will follow it and respect it. So have everything written down from the most basic thing to anything in between. Yeah. I feel like, you know, there's a little bit of mystery when, when, you know, bands, you know, originally signed with a label and stuff like that. And I've been around, you know, a good amount of bands in my lifetime to like, see contracts and see different things and stuff like that obviously it's not important to me because i'm not in the band or i'm not managing them or doing something like that but it's always interesting to see that and you know 
I, you know, any band that I've talked with that I've had on have been like, you know, always, you know, talking about your label and seeing how like good everything is and stuff like that. So that's always good to hear. And I don't hear anything like when I'm like talking with other friends, I'm like, oh, have you talked to, have you talked to Windrunner? Or have you talked to, you know, Dematerialize? Have you talked to these people? And they're all like, oh, she, you know, Chelsea's great, stuff like that. So that's always a good, that's always a good thing to hear because I feel like in this industry, I'll, more so than I feel like a lot of other industries is people talk in this industry. So I think, you know, it's important to have a good name and, you know, I, I definitely feel like, you know, one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on was like, well, I feel like you guys were one of the first labels I started working with, like on a kind of more serious ish basis. So I mm -hmm. was like, I was just like, Chelsea's like the go-to. So I was like, that was very cool. And again, appreciate you for coming on. Um, but what would be one band, like dream band that you would want to sign? Doesn't matter like if they were like if they were getting out of a contract or whatever or something like that. It just happenstance mm -hmm. where it worked. What would be one band you'd want to sign? I think there's two for me at the, oh. at the end of the day. Um, and it's a bit of a tie. It's a bit of a tie. And obviously, it, it, it will not happen for multiple reasons. <laughs> um, but Amorosa. Oh, okay. Yeah. I absolutely love those guys. I've been a fan since 2010. I got a couple of their songs tattooed. Like, I love those guys 100%. And then, especially the self-title. That's a, The self-title for me is, like, absolutely number one um, compared to everything else. And the latest stuff is great, too. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think there's being the self-title for me, personally. Um, and the other one is Off Machines, which, you know, pulled out one of the best albums of 2009, 2010. Oh, yeah. And then just disappeared into nothingness forever. Um, and I still, still listen to that album a few times a month. Um, it's it's 100% up there. I, I think it's a tie between their album and the, the Amorosos um, self-titled. So I never really quite narrowed down which one is the best one. Um, but I... Either of the two, I'd love it. And if it really came down to like just one out of two, it might be off machines because I, I do think there needs to be a sequel to that album. I really do. Oh, a hundred percent. I feel like they they're they're one band that I feel like a lot of people love, but also like there's a good a portion of this current generation in the scene that do not know anything about them. So. No. You should go check out of the machines. Uh, I'm sure the anthology is on rise, so you can go check that out. Um, such a underrated record so underrated yep glad I'm, I'm glad you i'm glad you mentioned them they need they definitely <laughs> need that love hopefully who knows they might come back well, you know i'm i'm not gonna right. i'm not gonna put it out there i hope it i hope it does but um the next thing chelsea is how do you go about finding these bands now since you have like i i feel like you have a really good following now with your label and stuff like that so is the process any different from like when day one when you were starting out do you feel like it's a little bit different and do you still do like the reconnaissance work like do you go out and go find these bands or how how's the process is it any different from day one it's probably not that different because at the very beginning obviously when nobody knows who you are it's just a lot of like scouting and searching and you know it. yeah <clears throat> see see what's out there see and spotify was not either it wasn't a thing or it wasn't a, clearly not as big as it is yeah. now obviously <laughs> i don't even know when it actually launched like the actual year um, so it was a lot of, you know, YouTubing and a lot of um, iTunes, see maybe what's charting and what didn't, back at, or just what's popular right now, that kind of stuff. Now it's not that different. Um, I do mainly everything we do at this point in time is either through submission, because we do get them. Um, mm -hmm. Word of mouth, we get a lot of that too. Um, like I get some people and friends, or even just like some people that we messaged in the past, um, maybe on Instagram, like, hey, check this video out because maybe they have like a promotional channel sure. and they get back to me and they're like, hey, somebody reached out, just wanted to pass them along because I think they're great. So it's a, a whole lot of word of mouth, really. Um, but it's also a whole lot of YouTube for me personally. YouTube is my number one mean of finding anything. And then I just go check social media, Spotify, Instagram, all that stuff. But I would like to say that a solid 90 something percent of what we find is on YouTube. Oh, and as frowned upon as it might be, um, I also search Kingdom Leaks constantly. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that, that flies way under the radar. Oh, 100%. Um, is there. So if I ever run into something that 
looks cool or that has a lot of comments, maybe I just like go on Spotify and check it out. Um, that's how I discovered one of my one of the bands we dropped an album for last year. They're called City State, and I I found their EP on Kingdom Leaks. I went on Spotify, went on YouTube, checked the music video they have out um, for one of the the past songs. Freaking love the entire EP, and I just set them up. I was like, all right, let's let's chat, and then we <laughs> kind of made it happen. And I and I ran into them on Kingdom Leaks. Like I never heard of them. I didn't know they existed, and it's just because somebody left a comment on their ep on kingdom leaf that was like do not let this fly under the radar which it did unfortunately uh, yeah. but the comment alone i was like okay maybe this is worth like five minutes of my time um and, and it absolutely was like it's it's some it's one of the bands i had most fun working with um last year that's awesome well that's i mean obviously i i totally get the whole kingdom leaks thing i i also check out some artists on there and usually uh usually if i feel like a certain way about it like if i feel like oh my god like this is a band that like people don't know about that i should do a review of it's the same thing um i get some really great submissions too uh so i always uh, you know take a look for all different avenues when i'm looking for people you know to come on to the youtube mm -hmm. channel and stuff like that um as for the submissions like when you get a band email like what is something that you're just like this is a band that I like need to work with. Like they have all of their like stuff in a line, like, you know, whether it be like the format of the email or like how they like, approach you, you know, for a submission, like what are some things that you're just like, that would just be like two thumbs up. Like if you got it in your inbox, like what would be like some things that you would want to see from a band if you're trying to, if they were trying to get signed? I just want to see something that's well put together. Um, okay. I have learned to not really overlook anything. So I will admit that even if you send me something like, hey, here's my link, I will click it. I, I absolutely will. It doesn't mean it, I'll, it, it might just end up at the end of the pile, but I will click it and I will check it out. Sure. Um, but honestly, if you send me an email where, you know, there's like, here's a bit about us, here's what we, have, we are working on, um, here's some release material you can check out and our latest video just to say something. Um, that kind of information with social media links to just make it easy to look you up. Sure. That makes your life easier. Um, but at the same time, I've ran into some bands in the past where maybe it's like a very poorly put together email, but then the material's great. So who who am I to judge? Just because you can't put together a good email doesn't mean you're not a good musician at the end of the day. Um, so I try to check it out whenever I get the chance. It, like I said, it might end up at the bottom of the pile. But at the end of the day, the pile is on, and when I get to it, I'll just show up. That's that's interesting, you know, because I feel like with some of my stuff, like even if I get sent links or whatever, I'll check them out as well. Um, so I feel like in the same respect, like we have a same similar mentality in going yeah. through bands because you just never know. Like people, people would just mm -hmm. be very terrible putting emails together, and but they could have really great music. And I know I've yeah. had that happen to me a few different times. And I've had people that have sent me like really good packages, and maybe I'm just not into it or something like that. And so it kind of to me just maybe just didn't hit the right key, but um. That's interesting. That's good to hear that you like take a look at it regardless. I mean, obviously, you should still people watching, you should still send Chelsea the correct stuff. Like, you know, I feel like you should still be like, you know, on point because it's, you know, I feel like a band at, at a certain level is like a small business. You want to make sure you're putting your mm -hmm. best foot forward and stuff like that. And I feel like just going a little bit extra and having that extra effort in there, I think is always appreciated. So, you know, when sending out the emails, make sure to make sure to do it right the first time I feel like you know but um the next thing Chelsea uh obviously I have to ask you this um what are some bands that you've been jamming recently you know what's what's some up and coming bands that or maybe just bands in general that you've been listening to um at, lately I since the whole quarantine thing started um I get the chance to actually just like listen to a bunch of music when I work Mm -hmm. um even when i actually do go to like the regular nine to five so to speak um so it's been a lot of the first couple of days it was like uh here are my go-to's i'm just gonna put them on repeat but you know for eight hours in a row and, and two days in a row it kind of gets <laughs> it, it's a little too much um so i started a lot of shuffling um my go-to lately though um paris paris has been one of my go-to's since 2017 love this stuff um and you know the new singles have been coming yeah. out and 
all that. So they're easily one of something I can fall back onto pretty much at any time, really. Um, I mentioned I'm a role center of machines, obviously. I go back when I can, um, especially lately, like I said, when I get the chance to listen to more music because I have more time. Mm-hmm. I fall back onto a lot of older stuff that I used to love. Um, Memphis Mayfire, What Was Me, Old Issues. Um, what was I listening to today? I have one of these other um, Rise Core bands, Rise Core, like Rise Records. Um, <sighs> They were called The Coder, and I think then they changed the name again. Yes. Yeah, but right. it's some pretty cool ambient, really cool ambient stuff. Um, the Elijah, which was based in the UK, who disbanded, and the clean vocalist is now with Being as an Ocean, so started following Being as an Ocean. Um, so there's a lot of like a little bit of everything, really. Um, but even my Spotify right now, if I take a look at it, the last thing I was listening to is uh, Never Tell, they're from Florida. Um, and they're a more local band. Freaking love that stuff, though. Um, they have a really good couple of albums out that are fantastic. So I'm kind of like all over the board, really. Like I'm, I'm a little bit all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, especially lately, I even put back some um, boys like girls every now and then because I get the chance, like I said, to just like dig back and kind of like shuffle through everything I've ever saved in my entire life in my library. Um, so it's, it's kind of been fun to go back to stuff that I might not listen to as often that I've, maybe I haven't listened to in like a year or, or a decade, um, as far as I'm concerned, but, um, there's a little bit of everything. And I, I do listen to our artists too. Every now and then I just put up, I have, um, a library of all of our songs that we released divided by year. Um, and sometimes I just go back and just put those on, I'm kind of like on a loop. Oh, that's awesome. That's good to hear. That's very cool. Like you, like I said, we, you have some really great artists on your list. So I feel like that's always a good move to listen to, you know, what you got going on and obviously some new stuff that fingers crossed I will probably be getting at some point this year. I was listening. I was listening for the past two days. Today is the first day I stopped. Um, but up until yesterday and the day before I had some of the new Windrunner demos, like on a loop, constant loop. Because we're just trying to like see what see what they're working on and all that, um, and they send me some of the ideas they have. So I pretty much just put them on a loop because I'm trying to get familiar with all of it and kind of see the direction they're taking and all of that stuff. And the best way for me to do it was to literally just like put it on repeat <laughs> and then just let let it play, let it play. So I did I did two days at work, eight hours each, and that's all I listened to. So I, I had a solid sixteen hours of just their stuff on a loop. <laughs> That's good. Well, I, hopefully it's turning out really good. Uh, I was I was excited when you sent me the new the newest single over, and I was like, "Yeah, this is this is this is different." So I'm glad uh, I'm glad it's oh, going smoothly. Oh, I know I will. I know I will. I have <laughs> I have faith I will be getting it. Um, but the yeah. next question, Chelsea, another fun one that I've been asking uh, the bands that I've been having on. Um, if you were to compile a Chelsea Dream Tour lineup, who'd be on it? I think it's gonna be the same band at this point. Um, I'm I'm definitely gonna resurrect that machine as a headliner for sure. I never had the chance to see them because by the time I discovered them, they were already disbanded yeah. or were about to anyway. So something along those lines. Um, so definitely them. I I I really think that should be a thing. I would as as frowned upon as it might be. I want to bring back Johnny Craig and Tuberosa <laughs> for the self titled. Um, and then and then Bradley for everything else, but I want the self titled. I do want Johnny for that one, obviously. Um, oh hey, and Dance Gavin Dance, any kind of era, Dance Gavin Dance, I'll take that. I'm not as big into the whole Italian era as everything else, but I do like that too. So whoever you want to give me <laughs> that will front Dance Gavin Dance, I'll take it. Um, I'm down for any of those. Um, so it would be a really really long lineup, really. Um, Paris, somewhere in there, put Paris. Maybe some Paramore while we're at it. So there's there, there's a lot of stuff that That's... if I could put on a on a bill, I probably would. If I could have a festival right out of that tour, <laughs> like a work tour style kind kind of, kind of situation, that might work out a little better timeline wise. That's uh that's pretty solid. I feel like there's a good mix of like classic, like post hardcore, and there's some some it's of uh, you know like Paris, old Paris had a little bit of post hardcore vibes in it too. So I I would be about this. I would be a hundred percent on board. Yeah. So if you if all of these bands happen to watch this, yeah, 
let's uh <laughs> let's let's make it happen maybe maybe not this year but maybe in the following yeah. year or something like that 2021 <laughs> 2021 there we go there um go. and then the last thing chelsea the most important thing tell them about famine records you know if you have if you could spill the beans on anything coming up this is coming out in may i believe so if you have anything dropping then and then uh where they can find you at and obviously the best way to reach you yeah so we do i mean we we pretty much we work in advance enough where we do have stuff coming out throughout the summer and into um early fall at this point in time i think just what is it yesterday i think it was yesterday we announced we're dropping new dematerialize in may um we do have a single it will lead to more right now it's just a single um but we will have more news in may um we recently signed an italian band and we have another single from them coming out they're called applesauce and it's it's some weird can you curse on this it's some weird shit (laughs) um it's some really weird shit it's 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 I don't know. It's it's quirky. It's weird. It's it's. I think the comment I heard the most from people watching the video is literally, it's like, oh, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> so it's it's a really, really unique. It's very unique music and and a very unique band, very unique visuals. Everything is kind of like jumps out at you as being incredibly strange. Um, but I heard really good feedback across the board, and we did a single two weeks ago. We have another one coming out in May because it, it is leading up to an actual full length. So we will have more of that um, coming out. We have, we do have a new signing in May as well um, that we're prepping. So we we have a couple of new bands coming up and we stagger them pretty much one per month to keep the, the music fresh. Sure, um, yeah. Since, right. you know, we, there, we had to readjust our schedule due to the situation um, we're in, obviously. So we just stagger a little bit more things, but we do have new music pretty much every every month at this point, maybe sometimes less, sometimes more, but there's going to be new content pretty much every month at this point in time. Um, so May is going to be busy. June, we're going to slow down a bit. July is going to be busier and so on and so forth. So kind of like keep it going. Um, and then, um, and we, like I said, we do have, at some point we'll have new one runner. Um, I'm really, really waiting on that too. We're going to have new city state. Possibly this year. Um, we'll see. I know there's they're writing. Everybody's writing at this point. Because um, <laughs> everybody's home. So yeah. that makes sense. Um, so we do have a lot coming up. And then um, you can find us on all the, the usual social media. We have, we have Facebook. We have Instagram. We do have Twitter. We do not use it. Um, but we do have it. There's a website, famineracords.com, obviously. Um, everything really, our handle and our tag, pretty much everywhere, it's just famine records. Like, regardless of what social media you're using, it's pretty easy to find it. Um, and chances are you're going to run into a couple of the ads and stuff we're posting as well because we sponsor a bunch of stuff lately. So if you're not looking us up, you might just stumble upon something we dropped anyway. There we go. And then the last thing, Chelsea – how did you find out about the channel? Because this is always this has always intrigued me the most <laughs> because I feel like I had randomly gotten an email from you guys like pretty early on ish in YouTube, and I'm been it's been di- like I've been waiting for this moment to ask because I was just like if I didn't if we were we gonna do this then I was like I was gonna ask her eventually, but I'm just curious now okay. how did how did you find out about this channel? So in all honesty. This might backfire because I think you hit me up. I think in 2015, maybe, or 16, you hit me up because we had a, uh, had a band that was based in a, out of uh, Pennsylvania, Stargazer. Oh, and yeah, you that's were true. at a show. And I think you were at a show. That's or what it you was. were. That's what it was. Pretty okay. sure, right? So it was, now I remember. Okay, now I remember. It was my it was my do- so, doing. So. so you found me. So let me turn this around. How did you hear? About, so, how did you hear about? Okay, that? so I remember this. Now I remember. It's all coming back. I'm getting old, so that's probably why. Now I'm interviewing you. Oh uh, yes, you were interviewing me. The 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 yeah. tides have changed. Uh, so I had found out about you guys, um, because of another band. Uh, I believe it was Sentinels, and they're signed to Stay Sick now. But at the time, they were like, are you at launch conference? And I'm like, yeah, I'm at launch conference, which is shots launch conference is a great thing. Mm-hmm. And I, they were playing it. Yeah. 
And so I was just like doing a bunch of interviews and I was just like, this band's sick. And I was like, Sentinel said, interview them. So I was like, got to get them on. So I was just like, how am I going to do this? So then I just saw, I guess it was your email address or our famine's email address. And I mm-hmm. just remember emailing. And I was just like, it's Stargazer free. Cause I was like in my hotel at the time because I stayed for like all three days and I emailed you and I was like, Hey, I was like, I'm at this launch conference thing. I was like, would Stargazer be down to do an interview? And you were just like, yeah, I'll talk to Matt. Matt's going to get you set up. And I was just like, and then I just remember doing that. So that, yeah. that was, that was the way prior to that, yeah. I had seen your name around uh, and I had probably seen some Facebook ads and it was just, it just sounded familiar to me. So I obviously the ads were working back then and I'm sure they're working. Yeah, that's good to know. We're doing something right. But that's how I believe that's how I found out about you guys. So that I was, think so. yeah, I was, I, think I was so. trying to sometimes, sometimes it's usually the inverse, but I remember this time correctly that I've, I asked you guys to come on and then it wind up working mm-hmm. out where we, we had a good thing going. So um, definitely check out famine records. If you haven't already, if this does, doesn't give you any incentive to go check out, you know, Chelsea's work and her team's work, then, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I feel like she's very dedicated to, to music. Obviously you could tell the passion behind what she does. So, um, make sure to check the links in the description and find out about famine. Uh, if you want to do any submissions, feel free to email them too. Uh, I'm sure they'll be checking them more frequently ish because everybody's at home. So there's a good chance she'll give you a listen, but, um, make sure to do it right. Um, but, uh, go check out all of the bands on, on her label. Really? They've, she's got some, she's got a great lineup. So, um, you know, definitely proud to, you know, endorse what she does, you know, on the channel and hopefully we'll continue to do more you know, come the rest of this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure we will. Uh, and if you enjoy <laughs> this interview, make sure to share it, like it, subscribe. It goes a long way. Um, and thanks, of course, to Chelsea for coming on and, and talking about her story. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you for the time.